then kind of like our weather switched here. It felt a little bit like fall. Um, it did. It here. smelled like fall today, I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I actually, crisp. yeah, I got some mums for the porch. So I feel like that's my annual <laughs> fall thing. Like it's real. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, well, again, welcome everybody. Jesse's going to teach you how to paint this in just about an hour. So, um, Jesse, go ahead and get started. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Um, so, like Kira said, first I'm going to let you know what the supplies is for this painting. And again, all of this you can get um, from Michaels. So, what I have in front of me um, is a 10 by 10 canvas. So, I've got wood right now, um, but you can, a regular canvas is totally fine. Anything that's square or um, really any, it doesn't even have to be square. It can be longer if, if you want your painting to be longer, that's fine too. What I've got is a 10 by 10 wood canvas, but a 10 by 10 stretch canvas is also perfect. Either way is fine. Um, then I've also got my palette paper. So for those of you um, who don't know what palette paper is, it's just like a wax coated um, book of paper that I like to mix my paint on instead of, I just feel like sometimes I waste a lot of paper plates and styrofoam plates, so I, I like to use this, but those are also fine. So whatever you like to keep your paint on is perfect. Um, I've got paper, or I'm sorry, paper towels here for cleaning my brushes. I've got my water basin for cleaning my brushes. Um, and then we've also got our seven piece Craft Smart variety brush set. Um, so it's got a lot of different brushes in it. We've got some rounds, some flats. Um, and I'll let you know as we're going, whenever I switch to a new brush, I'll make sure to tell you what size the brushes that I'm using um, at the time. So um, this is the pack I have. Oops. And then I also have, this was on our supply list, um, a palette knife. So the one I have here, um, I think this is the four inch. So it's just kind of long. Um, so this is how we're going to do a lot of the texture on this painting. So um, if you have a plastic one or one that's a little bit different than this, that's fine. As long as it's a little bit long. Some of them are more um, diamond shape and some of them are, are just flatter. They don't have the diamond shape. Um, but anything you have that's similar to this should be totally fine. If you don't have this um, and you have like, what are those called here? Like the little butter spreaders? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I don't. Butter well, it's not the butter or, knife, but the thing I know what you're talking like about. Butter, it's that kind of got like too. that kink in the handle. Yep. Yes, exactly. It's a very similar shape to this. So if you have one of those in your utensil drawer, you can use that too. Just make sure you wash it off. Just make sure you clean off the paint after you're done. Um, and then as always, we're going to be using our folk art acrylic paints. So tonight, the colors we have are light blue, French blue, navy blue. We've got lots of blues tonight. And then we also have real brown, vintage white, and then one of my favorite paints ever, um, this is our treasure gold. So we're gonna be using this for some of the details in our painting. Um, and this is just like a really beautiful, like metallic gold. It's one of the most metallic gold paints that you're gonna find um, that's non-toxic. So it's non-toxic, it's water-based, but it's almost got like a mirror finish. This is one of my favorite, favorite paints to work with. So we're gonna be using a little bit of that tonight as well. Um, and then I've also got two things that are optional. So if you've got a ruler and a pencil, you might want to grab those. But again, these are sort of optional. I'm going to show you how to do it without these two. But if you're a perfectionist, you might want to grab a ruler and a pencil if you've got it. But, uh, but again, not required. So don't stress if you don't. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. You think we're ready, Kira? Yeah, I'm just putting um, all the colors that we're using in the chat, but I think we can get started. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start drawing our pumpkins. So we want to start drawing the composition. So this is one thing that sort of um, intimidates a lot of people is having to draw. People who like to paint don't always like to draw, but really they go hand in hand um, and it can be easy. So now's the time if you want to grab your pencil, if you have it, you can go ahead and do that. Um, it's a little bit safer because of course you can erase. So that's why it's kind of nice to have the pencil. But I'm going to show you how to draw it with just paint. So if you don't have the pencil, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my um, number five round brush. So number five round brush, this is just a small round brush. And then I'm gonna get some, um, I guess I'm gonna grab some, some of my navy blue so you can see it better. I was gonna grab a light blue, but I wanna make sure you guys can see my lines. So I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of navy blue and put it on my palette, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna dip my brush into my water basin and I'm going to make sure my brush has lots of water in it and I'm going to water down the paint a little. So normally I don't like to water down my paint. Normally I like to keep the paint, you know, nice and creamy and thick just the way it comes out of the bottle. Um, but if you paint with SE4, you know that this is often the way that I like to sort of draw with paint, um, draw the compositions of my painting. So again, we have navy blue and we've watered it down. I've got my number five round brush. And so I've watered it down almost to sort of an inky consistency. So hopefully you can see how it's sort of running on my palette. 
um, it's, it's super liquidy. It's basically just like tinted water. And that's what we're gonna use um, to draw out our pumpkin shapes. So to get started, um, whenever I'm drawing out a composition like this and it's, it's sort of centered, I like to sort of mark the edge of where all of my shapes are gonna be. And that sort of helps me to know, you know, if you say this is your, I'm gonna start making a mess. Say this is your canvas right here and you start drawing your little pumpkin here, and then you start drawing your big pumpkin, and you say, oh no, I got to the edge, I didn't leave enough space. So what I like to do on my canvas is mark on the edges where I want all of my shapes to end. And that way I know that I'm gonna leave myself enough space. I make little marks all over, so I know this is where my small pumpkin needs to be. This is where my large pumpkin needs to be, and now they're centered perfectly. So hopefully that's, that's something that I always do when I'm drawing something like this. So just like we said, we're gonna sort of mark it off. So if you have a 10 by 10 inch canvas, um, we're gonna go about two fingers up from the bottom on the left side, and we're gonna make a little mark there. So hopefully you can see that. I'll move it up in case the chat is blocking it for some of you guys. So I went about on the left half of my canvas, about two fingers up. So hopefully you guys can see that. We did a little mark right there. And now, um, Sort of perpendicular to that, I'm gonna go two fingers from the edge and make another mark there. And so we're gonna say this is the center of my small pumpkin. I'm gonna make another mark on the opposite side of that. So I'm gonna, I'm sort of eyeballing it. It doesn't need to be perfect. You can see this is sort of in the center and my two marks are on either side. And now I wanna finish it out and do another one across from there. So another mark right there. So now I know um, this is just placement for where my small pumpkin to be. To make it a little easier later on, we can just connect the dots. So for my larger pumpkin, I have, um, we're gonna go a little bit higher because you can see this one's set back a little bit further than our small one. So this line's gonna be a little higher. So I'm just gonna go a little bit taller than that or a little bit higher on my canvas than that. I see questions popping up about what I'm using. Again, I'm using wood, but any canvas will work. We're gonna paint the whole thing, so it doesn't matter what color you start with. So if you have a regular stretch canvas, that's totally fine. This is just what I had. So again, we did our mark on the right half. It's just a little bit above this one. And then I'm gonna go about an inch. Again, I'm just guessing from the side over here. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right where this line is and I'm gonna make my mark right there because I want it to be, you can see that it's overlapping a little here. So we wanna make sure that they're gonna be overlapping. And then this one, I wanna make it about the same height above this. So we're gonna put a line right here. So again, they're about equidistant from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna let you know all these lines that I just made because we went a little bit quick. So the first one we did was we went on the second half, on the left half of our canvas and I went about two fingers up. So two fingers up right there. And then I went sort of the bottom half of the left side and I went two fingers in and I marked right there. And then I sort of guessed, I pretended this was my center and I sort of guessed where this line would be. It's really close to the center of the canvas, honestly. And I made a line right across from there. And then I sort of finished it out as if it was a square and I made a line across from this one too. So hopefully you can start to see we're blocking off where the edges of this pumpkin are just for placement to make sure that our pumpkin's gonna be where we want it to help it later when we're trying to draw that perfect pumpkin shape. It's not gonna be lopsided, it's not gonna be wonky. These are going to be our guide to make sure that our pumpkin is a really uh, pumpkin-y shape really because pumpkins are, are generally very symmetrical. So that's what, this is one way to make that happen. So now for my larger pumpkin, I went, we wanna make sure our pumpkin is set back a little further than this one. So if this is the bottom, it's a little bit behind it. So I made a little line there. And then on the right side, I went about an inch in from the edge. And then I put this line right above the top of my small pumpkin. And then I just closed out that circle the same way we did the smaller one and I put a line right there. So hopefully, like I said, that helps you guys to um, really map out where your pumpkins are gonna be. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these. 
So we're gonna round out these edges. As you can see, I'm doing, I'm just rounding out the edges. I'm making a circle by connecting all of those lines. Can you see how simple that was? It made it much easier than having to try to draw a perfect pumpkin shape freehand and make it perfectly round and symmetrical, which can be really tricky. And if it doesn't end up perfect, it can really affect your candy, make it look super wonky. So this is something that's really important for um, the composition. So now we're gonna do the same thing up here. We're gonna round out these corners. We're gonna connect them with these round lines. And again, we're gonna kind of pretend where this one is because of course this would be behind our smaller pumpkin. And now we have two perfect pumpkin shapes. Okay, so the next thing, um, we're gonna draw our stems. So to do that, I have another little trick for it. We have these sort of blocky stems coming up from the top. So first thing we're gonna do is, here, show you on the little doodle I did right here. We're gonna make little triangles coming up, just tiny little triangles coming up from the top of our pumpkins. So can you see what I did there? I just made little, they're like little upside down V's, like little teepees coming up from the top. So here, I'll show you a little triangle coming up from the top of these round shapes. Just little triangles. And then we're going to have a line, a little curved line coming from the top, just like that. And then we're gonna widen that because of course we don't want that to be a stick figure. We want it to be an actual shape. So we're just going to put two lines on either side, just as if we were Say we're uh, you know, drawing a letter and we want to turn it into a bubble letter. It's kind of like that. So you have your line and then we're going to block it out on the sides because we want it to be a wider shape than that, of course. And there we have our stems. How did everybody do with that, Kira? Um, good. I think awesome. everybody is just painting. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a minute just to catch up because I wanna make sure you all have your compositions laid out before we start um, adding more paint to it. But for those of you um, who are, are already done drawing your paint or your pumpkins and you're ready to move on, um, we are going to grab some of our vintage white. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting the background. So we're just gonna start painting around our pumpkins using a flat brush. So just grab one of our medium to large size flat brushes, the three and three fourths inch flat would be great. And just start using vintage white to paint the background. Just let me know if anybody's got questions on that composition. It's probably a, the first time that anybody's really done it that way. So I wanna make sure everybody is, is keeping up and gets it. Again, we're painting with vintage white right now, and I've got my 3 4 inch flat brush. And vintage white, if you don't have it, it's really just like a, like a sort of like an ivory color. It's like an off white. So if you don't have vintage white and you just have like a regular, um, you know, wicker white or titanium white or something, just mix it with the tiniest dab of your brown, whatever brown you're using, just a tiniest dab of it, just to darken it a little. You don't want it to be such a pure, stark white. You want it to be kind of warm, like I said, kind of an ivory. So. If you just mix it with a little bit of your brown, you'll get something really similar. You still want it to be pretty light, but you just want it to be a nice warm white. Again, we're just painting the background around our pumpkin shapes that we just drew. Nice and quiet tonight. Is that I know. Nice part? <laughs> Everybody's painting along. Awesome. I love that. 
Hope you guys all had good long weekends. You're nice and relaxed for the upcoming week. And I just ran out of my vintage white, so I'm going to put a little more on my palette. You just want to do a nice thin coat. You don't need a ton of paint on there. Because again, we, we as always with these um, quick paintings that we do for our Michaels Let's Paint Live, we want it to dry pretty quickly because we really go kind of kind of fast. And sometimes we'll even pull out the hair dryer if we need some paint to dry so we can paint on top of it. But we don't have a hair dryer tonight. We're just going to sort of go um, step by step, sort of strategically. So we are letting our paint dry in between steps. But just make sure you have just enough paint to cover your canvas. You don't want a ton of paint on there, just enough to get that flat color. And even if you don't have complete coverage, if, there, if you see some brush strokes and you feel like you need another coat, don't worry about that. Because you can see how much texture we're gonna be adding to the background. So once we do that, if your paint um, wasn't completely covering your canvas, you won't even see it. So don't feel like you need to do a second coat, just do that nice um, thin first coat and then just let it dry. I like we need music or something in the background tonight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Quiet, which is good. People are relaxing and painting. Exactly. Someone just said, so serious tonight. I know. We feel it too. <laughs> okay. So the fun part now is we're going to start adding some color. So I'm going to grab some of my light blue, which is the lighter of the two blues we have, of course, light blue. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that onto my palette. So I'm gonna grab my, probably my, um, what is this one? My number eight flat brush, which is probably the, the medium flat brush we have for this pack. If you have like a half inch brush, a uh, half inch flat, that'll work too. So this is my, my number eight flat. And all we're gonna do is we're going to take the light blue and we're gonna use it to paint our pumpkin, our smaller pumpkin, I should say. So keep in mind when you're painting it, we wanna cover up these dark outlines. We don't wanna see that in the final painting. So you wanna cover up those navy blue outlines. So we're gonna go right up um, over to the edge of this to make sure that we, we don't see those anymore. So you're just gonna use the edge of your brush to make sure that we're covering up that, that dark outline. Because of course in real life, if you were looking at a photograph of pumpkins, that of course wouldn't be an outline. So we don't want to have that in our final painting. And all we're doing again, we just want to have a nice thin coat of paint, just enough to cover the canvas. So you can see we're gonna be adding a lot of texture um, and details to our pumpkins as well. So if it's, a, if it's not quite the coverage that you normally would like to get, that's okay, because we're gonna be adding lots of paint on top of it. We just wanna get a nice, smooth, even coat of paint.
go. Nice and even. The greatest thing about um, the folk art acrylics is that you very rarely, especially when you're doing painting like this, need to do a second coat. Just look at that. That was one coat with a tiny brush and it just has like the greatest coverage. So that's why um, this is our favorite paint to use because it just is so thick and creamy um, and just the, the pigment of it is just, um, I mean, it's just the best paint for painting in my opinion. Yep, and you are using light blue, which is the lightest of the three blues. Yes, ma'am. Yep, that's the, we're using light blue for the small pumpkin. Yep, so light and, blue, French blue, and then navy. So if you don't have all three blues, you could just, you know, pick the blue you have and either add dark or add light to, you know, get your three different shades. Absolutely, yep. So like really navy blue is just a great color to have. So if you don't have navy blue at home when you're painting, I just recommend having it because it's kind of hard to mix. So say you have navy blue and white, just add a little bit more white each time. Add a little bit of white to get your French blue and then add even mostly white to get your light blue. Um, so for the larger pumpkin, we're doing the same thing for those of you who are a little bit ahead, but we're gonna use the French blue for this pumpkin. So the medium blue that we have tonight, we're gonna do the same thing with our larger pumpkin. And also just using the um, number eight brush, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're actually going to mix a little bit before we get too ahead. We're going to mix the tiniest bit of navy blue into it. So we're going to grab just the tiniest corner of our brush and we're going to mix it with our French blue because we want it to be a little bit darker. So this one's got sort of like a, it's got sort of like a vintagey tone to it almost, like a dusty tone to it, whereas the light blue is very bright. So that's why we chose it. It's got, like I said, it's got sort of like a dusty, like farmhousey tone to it. But we do want to make it a little darker because it is kind of similar to the light blue. So that's why we're just adding a touch of navy. And then we're going to use that to paint our, and I've got my 3 fourths inch flat brush. We're going to use this to paint our larger pumpkin. And again, we're just doing a nice thin, even coat. We should make sure that we cover up these navy lines on the edges. Just using the edge, the corner of the brush, just that chiseled edge to our advantage to get that nice crisp edge around our pumpkin. How's everybody doing here? No questions tonight? No, everybody's just painting. Um, I think everybody is interested in the wood because we usually paint okay. on canvas. Yeah. I prefer to paint on canvas, but again, this is just what I had tonight, so. Yeah, um, no, I think it's great. Either way is totally fine. I'm just relaxing watching it. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. You're just getting a little break from the questions. <laughs> You should grab a paintbrush and paint along while you're at it. Oh, I think everybody's <laughs> just getting so good after watching you that they, uh, <laughs> Everybody's pros now. Don't no need me anymore. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> so when you're done painting um, the larger pumpkin, you can go ahead and clean your brush off. Um, some people do have a question when it's time for a um, palette knife. If they don't have one, what could they use? Hmm, good question. Yep, so when Kirsten's taught, we've gone through this, and um, people have gotten really creative. So <laughs> a, um, like a plastic butter knife that you could even bend and kind of give it that, um, like, angle, like a palette knife works great. Um, people have used back of a spoon to just oh, that's skim good. because you just want it to skim. Um, a gift card, like an old gift, a gift card, card or credit card. 
a gift card is a really good, uh, for what we're doing tonight, for the way that we're using our palette knife tonight, I would highly recommend a gift card. That's very smart. Either that or a popsicle stick. If you've got like a craft stick at home, that would be great too. So I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the spoon just for the way that we're painting tonight, but the gift card is a great idea. So if you got that, that's very smart. I'll go ahead and grab that. Kirsten's so smart. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you have a palette knife. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, super resourceful. Okay, so once you've got that done, um, we're gonna start painting in some of the details. So we're gonna start with the background um, and we're going to paint, we've got sort of like a shiplap thing going on in the back of this painting, as you can see, there's sort of like these like boards or like painted wood or something behind, behind this, this, these farmhouse pumpkins. Um, so we're going to start painting these lines in our background. So that's why I said if you're a perfectionist, you may want to grab a ruler for this part just so you can get the nice straight lines. Um, but if you're not a perfectionist like me, then you can just go ahead and hand paint them in um, and you don't have to worry about them being absolutely perfect. It's totally up to you. So again, if you're a perfectionist and you have a ruler or any sort of straight edge, you can use a piece of paper, you can use, you know, the edge of a box, whatever sort of straight edge you have is totally fine. Um, but again, not required, just a suggestion um, if you've got it. So to draw our lines, I'm going to, um, what, I've got my number five round brush. So this is the one that we use to draw our pumpkins at first, for those of you who use paint for it. And we are going to paint our lines with our light blue. So the light blue is the lightest of our blues tonight, and I've already got a little bit on my palette. So if you don't have it, go ahead and add some more, but I've already got some. And I'm going to start about maybe an inch from the top. So I'm going to mark it there. I'm going to mark on either side. I'm going to mark an inch here and an inch here. And I, you can see that I'm just sort of eyeballing it. I, I'm not that concerned about it being perfect. And then I'm going to go maybe two inches down and I'm going to mark it and watch what I'm going to do here. So I've got my first line and my second line and I went two inches down. I'm going to try to keep my hand in the same position and move it to the left side to get that second line to make sure that my spacing is right. So again, I'll show you. I've got my first line about an inch down, just a little marker. And then I went about two inches down from that. And I've got, I'm gonna put my fingers there and hold my hand in place and move it over to the other side and mark that line. And that's how I know that they're pretty similar. Again, maybe not perfect, but they're pretty similar and that's what we're looking for. So now for my next um, little slat of wood, I'm gonna go about two inches below that. I wanna make them pretty evenly spaced and I'm do the same thing. I'm gonna hold my two fingers here and I'm gonna to try to keep my hand in place the best I can and move it to the other side and make my mark there. So we're gonna keep going down with, the, with that technique. And again, if you have a ruler, that's great. That just makes it easier. So you can just measure. You can say, you know, one inch from the top, two inches down, two inches down, one inch from the top, two inches down, two inches down. It makes it that much easier. But I always like to just give you guys some options in case you don't have the exact supplies because I know it's a little bit tricky to get supplies right now. So again, if you don't have the ruler, you can just use your fingers for measuring. So again, I'm gonna go about two inches below that. Again, just eyeballing, and then I'm gonna move my hand over and mark it there. So that is how we're going to get the sort of placement for our slats of wood in the background. And then now, if you've got, like I said, if you've got some sort of straight edge, you can use that to connect your lines. Um, or again, if you have a ruler, of course, you can use that to connect your lines. Um, or you can just eyeball it. I know, again, that it seems like that's kind of the hardest way to go, but it, sometimes it's easier than you think it's going to be. So I'm just going to eyeball mine. I'm just going to do my best to connect them from left to right. So I'm just going to try to keep it level. That's the most important part. Do my best to keep it level. Make sure that I'm the same distance from either side until I get to my right hand mark. And I go nice and slow and light so that if I, I do make a mistake, it's easy to correct. Just nice and slow, going from left to right, making sure you're sort of the same distance as you go, trying to keep it as level as possible. Oops. 
and it doesn't need to be perfect. Don't forget that. This painting is really loose, and so don't stress if it's not absolutely perfect. And again, I'm just connecting the left lines, my little left markers to the right markers. And it's easy behind the pumpkins because you don't have to draw as much. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we're just connecting them left to the right side. And we're kind of stopping there. So hopefully that was pretty simple for you guys. You can even go back in if you did them really lightly and sort of darken them up just so you can make sure you can see where they are. So you just want to have that light sort of marking of where they are so we can go back in later on and add some really beautiful color and texture to our background. So now we have this, it's like I said, it's sort of a, sh a shiplap thing look we've got going. I'm gonna clean my brush off. So while you guys are doing that, um, we're gonna do another simple step. We're just gonna paint in um, our stems. So the stems we already drew, we're just gonna paint some um, color into that. So I'm gonna grab my real brown, which is just sort of like a pure brown color. So if you've got like a coffee bean color or like a burnt umber or something, that totally works. And we're going to mix it with vintage white. So I'm gonna grab, where's my brush? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna grab my um, number eight flat. So this is, like I said, the, the medium flat brush we have in this pack. So even like a half inch or a quarter inch flat will work for this, but I've got my number eight. And we're gonna mix real brown with vintage white. So we've got this pretty tan color. It's sort of a mushroom color. Here, I'll show you guys. Hold it up a little bit so you can see the color. So we've got this color right here. It's like a, I did one part real brown and one part vintage white. And we've got that sort of mushroom color. And we're just gonna use that to paint in um, the shape of our stems that we drew. How's everybody doing, Kira? Um, everybody's just getting caught up, so maybe we can pause for just a second once you get the pumpkin stems filled in. That's what I was wondering, if it was going too fast. It's a little too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> So like Kira said, I'm going to give you guys a minute or two just to catch up. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to go back and show you anything um, that you need to see again. Um, so while we're letting people catch up, I'm going to tell you guys about the Let's Paint group. Um, so we have this awesome Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid. So if you go on Facebook and you search Let's Paint with Plaid and search for groups, you'll find it. And we've got, we've got like thousands of members now. It's crazy. But we've got all of Plaid's artists on there. Um, I'm on there. Andy Jones is on there. If you've heard of Priscilla Hauser, even Donna Dewberry is on that group. 
um, and everybody is just posting their artwork and commenting on each other's artwork, whether it's your first time painting, if this is your first painting you've ever done, we've got artists just like you. If you've been painting for 20 years, we also have artists like you. So um, I highly, highly recommend joining that group if, you're, if you have any interest in painting at all because any questions you have um, or if you'd like to help other people, that is the group for you. So again, it's called Let's Paint with Plaid, P-L-A-I-D, which is the name of our company. Um, and that's on Facebook. So make sure you guys join that because it's just an awesome community. Um, and there's really nothing like it. It's just a free, awesome group of people that are just helping each other and loving to paint. So you really can't beat it. Yep, I just but, put the Let's Paint with Plaid on Facebook um, in the chat. So that was a great oh, call. Out. Perfect, perfect. And I also love, love, love to see your guys' paintings on there too. So people from these um, Michael's Let's Paint Live Monday night classes always go on there either right after or Tuesday morning and post their paintings. And then that way I get to see what you did. Um, so make sure you, you join and you post your paintings and you share even other artwork you're making. We love, love, love to see it. So yeah. hopefully we get lots of new members after tonight. We'd love to see you guys there. There we go. We just switched back to the painting. Good. I think people are just catching up. Somebody has all 17 of her paintings up. That's awesome. Christina does. I was going to say, I think I know who that is, Christina, because yeah. you joined the, the Let's Paint uh, Facebook group. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah, so we, so Jesse teaches every Monday night. So we are going to be here through the end of the year. Yeah. Monday nights. And then we have some fun stuff coming up. Um, if anybody's into cosplay, um, Evil Ted will be um, on here with us the next three Fridays. We're doing some fun stuff. We have a brand new paint line out, FX Paint, that is yeah. great for EVA foam. So if you're into that, you definitely want to join. And Evil Ted's a great guy. And I know Jesse will be on um, mm -hmm. doing the chat with him. Yeah. And then we His name is Evil Ted, but he's not evil. He's actually really nice. <laughs> he's one of the nicest. <laughs> Um, and then in October, I think every Friday in October, Jesse and I will be here. We're going to be doing a lot of pumpkin uh, painting, like no carved pumpkin mm -hmm. decorating. So stenciling, Mod Podge, painting, pouring um, on the fake pumpkins. So it'll be really fun to do um, in October. Yeah. I'm excited for all the fall paintings. This is one of my favorite times of year, all the beautiful fall colors we get to use. Um. And if you don't have gold, um, what else could they use, Jesse? They could either go back after and add the gold once they get gold, or even white or cream would look pretty. It, well, to be honest, we're doing we're going to be laying a lot of colors. It's kind of hard to see here, but we've got light blue, um, navy blue, light brown, and dark brown layered on here, and then the gold. So even without the gold, this painting is going to be beautiful and detailed. So the gold is kind of like that extra touch to just give it that little bit of shine. You can see how, how it shines. Um, but you don't really need the gold. Gold is sort of optional. It's not necessarily like super um, required for this painting. But if you have another kind of gold, if you have just like one of the regular metallics um, or, you know, any acrylic metallic paint, that will totally work. It doesn't have to be treasure gold, even though this is the best one. <laughs> but silver, copper, any of that would be great. Oh, copper would be beautiful. Whatever color you think would look good, it's your painting, by all means, give it a go. All right, I think everybody's uh, getting caught up so we can keep going. Okay, cool. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start drawing some, um, you know, I always say drawing. We're gonna be painting, but we're gonna be using it like a, like a pencil. Um, we're gonna be start making some lines on our pumpkins. So to do that, um, I've got my Back to my number five round brush. So this is the, the round brush you've been using. This is the one we use to draw our outlines and to draw our lines in the background, this medium round. And I'm gonna wet it a little bit, not a lot, not as much as the first time we did it, just a little. So I, uh, I'm gonna grab some of my navy blue, which I've already got on my palette. So if you don't have navy blue in your palette anymore, if you've used it all, go ahead and add some more. And again, I don't wanna water it down too much, just a little bit, because I'm gonna make some thin lines and I really wanna make sure my my uh, paintbrush flows really well across the canvas. I just want, want it to glide. So we just added a tiny bit of water. So to paint our lines, you can see in our final painting here, we've got four lines. So we've kind of got this shape in the middle and then it looks like each sort of section of pumpkin is layered behind that. So keeping that in mind, we want sort of this like football shape in the middle 
and then two, two of the lines on either side of that, sort of cutting each of those in half. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So we've got our sort of football shape. And again, just take your time on this one. It's sort of rounded and comes down to the bottom. And we've got the other one that's symmetrical, sort of mirroring it. And again, take your time. If you want to do it in a pencil first, if you feel more comfortable, and then come back with the paint, that's fine. So we've got our little football shape here. That's like a, like a long football. It's like a, sort of like an eye shape, like a sideways eye. And then we're going to do another line that cuts each of these sections in half. So you can see I want to sort of follow the middle of this section and the same on the left side. Follow the middle of this section. And that's how we get that really pretty um, symmetrical pumpkin shape. Because again, pumpkins are just super symmetrical. They just always are. It's very rare that you see a lopsided pumpkin. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're pretty much always the same. They're always pretty much mirrored. So that's really important when you're painting or drawing a pumpkin to make sure you have it perfectly symmetrical. So once you've got those lines in, just take your time. Um, and don't be scared too, because you can always touch it up with this blue. So if you feel like you, your lines got a little wonky, if you kind of lost control there, um, you can just paint over it with that blue that we made, that, that medium blue. Okay. So once you've done that, we're gonna use this medium blue. And if you don't have the medium blue anymore, you can just go ahead and grab some of the French blue. And we're gonna do the same thing on our smaller pumpkin. So again, we're gonna draw that sort of football-y shape in the middle. It's like an ellipsis, I think maybe is what it's called. I don't really know. Um, and then we're gonna do the same, the, the line on either side. So again, just right in the center, this sort of, you can see that, yeah. Football-ish shape, a long, long football, which is perfect for fall. And then again, we're gonna cut each of these in half with the line. There you go. And you can see my lines are kind of like loose. They're not perfectly solid and that's okay. Cause look at our final painting. We've got all this sort of like rough, beautiful texture going on. So they're not perfectly solid or even perfectly straight. That's okay. It's sort of a loose painting anyway. Don't stress about that. Everybody's asking what we're painting next. I'm trying to get you the um, painting, Jesse, so we can show it at the end. But it's oh, a fall okay, cool. tree. Yeah. yeah. It should be on my desk if John's looking for it right now. Yep, I just <laughs> said that. I just texted him. <laughs> There's a stack of paintings, and it is definitely in there. <laughs> so people are just getting, cut it, um, getting caught up painting their lines on their pumpkins. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to let people catch up because that's yep. pretty much it for our brush painting. And the next thing we're going to do is get into the palette knife. So I want to make sure everybody is up to speed when we start with the palette knife. So let us know where you guys are painting from. We'd love to hear. I know we've got people from all over. Um, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're painting from tonight. Let us know how long you've been painting. We'd love to hear that too. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Laura is painting with her sisters, long distance painting. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, Texas, Florida, Seattle, Wisconsin, Ooh. everybody all over. I know, that's awesome. Wow. Alabama, Hawaii, I saw, that's awesome. Cape Cod, that's, that sounds nice. <laughs> Myrtle Beach, that sounds nice too. That's awesome. Well, John just brought in our um, painting for, here, I'll show you on the overhead, our painting for next week, which is these fall um, trees. So this is next Monday's painting. I don't want to cover up the painting because people are trying to catch up. This is our painting for next week, our fall trees. Yeah, I so love that. Another fun fall one. It's, a, it's much different than the one we're painting tonight, but um, yeah, we've got all these really, like I said, I'm excited, all these really beautiful fall colors. Um, and if you're intimidated about painting trees, don't worry because we have a really simple way to do it. If you joined us for our cherry blossom tree, you have a step ahead because you have probably done this technique with us, um, but this is another really beautiful composition using that same technique that we use for our cherry blossoms. So 
I'll leave a surprise for those of you who didn't join us for that one, but make sure you sign up for next week because this is what we're going to be painting. I'll leave it here just for a minute until we move on. How are we doing? You think people are catching up? Yeah, everybody. Um, Tammy, I'm glad you're trying and painting along with us. <laughs> um, someone's painting with their daughter. Awesome. Your sixth class. Let's see what else. Sign up, everybody. Go to michaels.com. You can sign up for that. Yeah, the same way you signed up for this painting, oh. uh, this one should be coming up on the calendar. My mom and I are from Philadelphia. She, oh, she's 94 and they're painting. Wow, love congratulations, that. that's amazing. Yep, someone's painting with their dog, I love that. <laughs> Very cool. The pooches, yep. Aw. That is awesome. I think um, people wanna see the finished, yep, there you go. Oh, okay, cool. So this is where we are right now. So again, we're about to get into all the details. So this is where everybody, it should look like something like this right now. Okay, so are we ready for the palette knife? Yeah, I think we're powder. ready. Okay, cool. All right, so now just for the fun part where we get to paint kind of loosely. Um, the first color we're gonna use is this mushroom color that we mixed. So um, in case you forgot, it was, <laughs> I saw someone said they hate the palette knife. I know. <laughs> this is a little bit easier, don't stress. We're not painting the whole painting with the palette knife tonight. Use a, we're just use a credit card or a gift card and then you'll have to use the palette knife. There you go, that just cracked me up. Okay, don't worry, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> So we're gonna be doing um, one part real brown and one part vintage white. We're, we're gonna make this mushroom color that we just made a few minutes ago. So let's, let's mix some of that again. Or if you have a ton of it left over, that's fine too. So we've got one part real brown and one part vintage white. And we're getting this sort of like pretty um, light brown, sort of mocha almost color. And that's the color we're gonna start with our palette knife first. We're gonna start subtle. The, yeah, the same color that you made for the stems. Exactly, the same color we used for the stems. It's one part real brown and one part vintage white. It's like a coffee color if you use a lot of cream in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna clean our brush off. I always make sure to clean my brush right away because you don't wanna let that paint dry in it. That's how you ruin your brushes. You can keep brushes for a long, long time if you make sure you always clean them right away. And it's a hard habit to get into. I, I'm certainly guilty of letting my, my brushes dry too long, but it's just a good habit to try to, to get into. Okay, so for the palette knife, um, we're gonna do a little bit of practicing just in case some of you guys um, have not used it before. Hopefully a lot of you guys have, hopefully you've been joining us um, when Kirsten has been, painting, has been teaching this class, because she loves the palette knife and she's really good at making beautiful paintings using the palette knife. Um, but just in case this is your first time using it, we're gonna do a tiny bit of practice. So um, I would recommend grabbing like a scrap piece of paper. Um, you know, if you grab like an old bill or something, whatever you have laying around, some sort of scrap paper, if you've got a sketchbook, something like that, I would recommend grabbing that now. Even a paper towel is fine, just something to practice on. I'll use, I'm gonna use this paper right here. This is my, my outline, but it's fine. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our palette knife. You can see how I'm holding it. Here, I'll show you. I got my palette knife. This is how I'm holding it. And I'm going to pick up some paint and I only want to pick it up on the bottom and I want it to be on the top half. So as you can see, I have my palette knife turned over. This is where I want the paint to be, on the top half. I don't want the whole thing saturated in paint, just the top half. So I'll show you. I'm just going to scrape it up off my palette or you can do like a dabbing motion. and we just want it on the top half. Do you see that? Here, I'll hold it up higher. So there you go, we've got that mushroom color on the top half of our palette knife. Can you see that, Kira? Yep, perfect. Okay, good, I just wanna make sure everybody can see Yeah, that. no, that helps holding it up. Okay, good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our palette knife, for the most of the part, we're gonna hold it um, 
sort of horizontal to our canvas. So you can see how I'm holding it here. It's gonna going left to right, horizontal. And I'm going to just drag my palette knife down. So what we're gonna do now is just get sort of a feel for how much paint you need on your palette knife and how much ends up going onto your canvas. So just do some practice. You can see I have a lot of paint on there. So I'm getting a lot of paint on my canvas. So if I wipe some of that paint off, I'll get less paint on there. So you can see I have barely any went onto my canvas there. So we just really want to get a good feel for how this feels in our hand and how it sort of works. How, you know, how much paint you need to have, how you need to hold it, what it's going to look like when you start smearing paint on your canvas, because I know it can be kind of intimidating if you've never done it before. So it, we just want to sort of do a bunch of strokes, do some practices, sort of get a feel for um, how it feels, like I said, to paint with this. And then if you're using something other than a palette knife, you would just basically want to pull straight down, like load exactly. your paint so, and pull straight down. Say you've got, you know, a credit card. I'm going to use my phone. I'm not going to dip it in paint. Say this is my credit <laughs> card in my hand, right? I'm going to dip it into my paint and I'm going to pull down just the same way. So help, or if you have a popsicle stick, same thing. It's going to be a little harder because there's less surface area. But you're going to dip it in and you're going to pull it down the same way, just like we're doing this. This one just has a handle. That's the only difference. Perfect. So we're going to pull down just like this. And you can see um, it, it feels a little random. You can control it, but you obviously can control it as well as you can control a brush. And that's really the point. That's the beauty of a palette knife is you get all this really organic, beautiful texture. It is kind of random and that's how it's supposed to be. So just keep that in mind when you're painting. Don't get frustrated. Just realize the reason we're doing this is because you want that sort of vintage farmhouse look. We want it to look like there's paint that's been scraped on it and paint that's been chipped off of it. That's really the look we're going for. So the more random it looks, the better. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated because I know it's kind of hard for some people when they're first starting out with the palette knife. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this color because I just use it all for my practice. So again, we're starting with this mushroom color, which is one part real brown and one part vintage white. Cleaning off the palette knife a little. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do it just like we were practicing. We're going to apply paint to the top half of our palette knife. You can see here, it's just on the top half on the underside. And we're gonna do just like we did, but we're gonna start at the lines on our shiplap. So I'm gonna start right here. You can see I'm just, I'm matching the edge of my palette knife to that line and I'm gonna pull down just like I did on my practice ones. And I'm gonna follow this line, continuing to pull down. And I want it to look like this particular piece of shiplap has lots of paint on it. It's been painted many times over the years and the paint has been weathered and worn and chipped off. That is the look that we're going for. So I'm just matching that line and I'm continuing to go down. You can add more paint if you need to, you can take some paint off if you feel like you've got too much. And if you feel like you need to go back and keep practicing, by all means, do that. That's fine too. And I'm gonna keep doing that for each one of these, for each line that we drew in the background. I'm gonna keep going with this mocha mushroom color. I'm just starting at the blue line that we painted and I'm just dragging down. Why can't I get any paint right there? There we go. Oops, that was a lot right there, but that's okay. Like I said, it's supposed to be random, so I'm not worried about that. Maybe you can even do a little bit on the top there. Just so this is a great technique for any painting. So even if you weren't yes. doing pumpkins, it's just a great technique to get that weathered shiplap look. Exactly, yeah. If you're painting any sort of wood, even for furniture, we've got an awesome tool um, called the layering block, which is a very similar technique. And it's for painting furniture to look like it's been worn in distress without having to paint on all those coats of paint and then sand them away. It looks like it's, it's been chipped without having to actually chip the paint. It's awesome. This is really the same technique. You're just using the palette knife instead. So when we get to the bottom, we want, so 
if we're looking at this painting, obviously, if this is all shiplap, it looks like our two paintings are, or our two pumpkins are just sort of floating in the air. And that's not what we want. We want to pretend like this bottom piece of shiplap is like a table or the ground. Our pumpkins are sitting on this ground. So in order to have this look different, you can see we've added a lot more texture down here. It's sort of to almost look like shadows. So here, I'll show you how I'll do that. I want to add a ton of this brown on the bottom most piece of shiplap. And I ran out of this color, so I'm going to have to mix a little bit more. So shiplap, somebody is asking. So that's um, the style of um, wall covering. So it's like a horizontal slat walls that are really popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called shiplap. Yeah. Like if you've ever seen, it's like usually like whitewashed. It just looks like paneling, but it's usually like a whitewashed um, uh, look to it. Yep. And horizontal, not vertical. Horizontal, exactly. If you watch HG, HGTV, you probably know <laughs> what shiplap is. Yeah, I'm just mixing some more of this color because I ran out. So if you need some more, feel free to do the same. So again, I just want to put a ton of this color on the bottom because I want it to look different from those. I want it to be, these are going to be more white and this one is going to be less white because I want it to look like this. I want it to look like it's um, a different sort of area than the ship lab. I want it to make it look like it's like the ground or a table or something like that. So again, I'm just smearing paint. I'm literally just picking it up, like I said, and I'm just sort of smearing it on there. You can see I'm sort of holding it and sort of steadying it with my finger for this part, which helps. It gives you like a little, it's a little more sturdy. It's not so flexible. You can have a little more control that way. We got any questions, Kira? Um, no, people are just painting along. Okay. Easy crowd tonight. Good. <laughs> They're always easy. I know. Everybody's just painting. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. people are painting along. I love that. Yeah, it's good and to get inspired too, but. Yeah, and then again, you can always check out this video on michaels.com and I've, um, I can post the link again if anybody needs it, but right on the um, community classrooms page. So you can get this after the fact. It takes about 24 hours till they get it up. You can watch um, this painting or any other of Jesse's paintings on there just a great free library of paintings, um, paint classes, and all yeah. different classes you can take. So if you're not painting along, um, you can always go back and do it, you know, later when you have some time. Okay, so hopefully you guys didn't spend too much time on that. Hopefully you're finishing up um, because, again, you shouldn't spend too much time on it. You want it to be nice and loose and nice and random, so you kind of want to be quick with it. So the next thing we're gonna do is I, I clean off my palette knife. I got that brown color off. I just wiped it off or you can dip it in water if you need to and just wipe it off, make sure it's nice and clean again. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my light blue. So light blue was the lightest of the colors, of the lightest of the blues, I should say. And again, we're applying it the same way. We don't want a ton of paint. We just wanna apply it to the top half. And we're gonna go back and do the exact same thing we just did over this brown color. So we're just adding more layers of color. Same exact thing we just did. So we, we're all pros at using it now. We're all pros at painting this ship lap. We're gonna go back and add lots of layering. Just right on top of the color you just did. You can see I, I haven't let it dry any longer than you guys have. So if it mixes a little, so be it. That's okay. And then I wanna add lots to the bottom too, just like we did with the brown. We don't want to add too much because it, it might be wet. We don't want it to get super muddy, but just a little bit of the blue here and there. We want to have that blue down there. We don't want to be like scraping it around a lot because that'll start mixing these colors together and that'll just be kind of like a big mess down there. Um, but we do want to make sure we have a good amount of blue. And if you have too much brown, you can always go back with the vintage white and cover it up. Yeah, great idea, Kira. I always say that whenever you're doing something like this with lots of texture and it's easy to add and hard to take away, when it's dry, like Kira said, you can always go back with that base color and it covers it up and it keeps that beautiful texture though. Good, good point. And you're just using light blue. Yeah, we're using light blue, which is the lightest of the three blues we've got tonight. 
Yeah, because it looks like your example, you don't have as much of the brown and the blue, but I, you know, I like both versions. Yeah, it's true. Like, that's the thing with the, um, with using the palette knife, it's going to be so different every time. It's going to be really hard to try to recreate something exactly because it is so random and it is so, so organic, but you're right. I did add a little bit more, didn't I? But that's okay. Yeah, it's totally fine. I like both looks. Yeah. Thanks. I think I remember going back and thinking that my pumpkins looked like they were floating and I didn't like that. <laughs> so I try to remind myself for the next time I paint it to do it a little differently. Um, and you want to add a little bit on the top here too. Not a lot, but you don't want this to be blank when the rest have so much texture. So I'm just going to like ever so gently put a little bit of blue up there, just like kind of on the edge even, just because I don't want it to be so light. I want it to look like it's part of the same painting. And then I'm going to clean my palette knife off. We just got a few more steps. That looks great. Thanks. Okay, so once you've done, you're done with the light blue, we're, we still got our palette knife, we're going to pick up some of the vintage white. And this time we don't want quite as much. We want to have very little paint on our palette knife. So hopefully you can see this. I've barely got any paint on there. Can you see it sideways? It's like hardly, I wiped most of it off. It's just the tiniest smear of paint. I don't want a lot for this part because we're going to hold our palette knife. We're going to hold it in our hand. And we're going to, like I said, sort of support the palette knife part, like the knife part with our finger. And we're going to paint some highlights on our pumpkins. So for these highlights, it's not going to be anything crazy. We're going to be doing the same exact technique, but we're going to focus towards the top of our pumpkins and drag down. So we're just going to create some texture on these. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to drag down. So you can see how light that was. Kind of dry while I was talking, but drag down. We don't want a lot of paint because we don't want it to be too dramatic, but we're following the shape. You can see I have hardly any paint on there. We're following the shape of the pumpkin and we're dragging down to create, like I said, something that will look sort of like a highlight. And people are asking if you could dry brush this instead, which absolutely sure. could. Totally you could. Yeah, that's a good idea. If you don't have a palette knife and you don't really have something that you feel comfortable using as a substitute. I love that idea. I'm gonna go down, not terribly far, but about halfway maybe. Ooh, that was a lot, but that's okay. Kind of like a dramatic swipe every once in a while. <laughs> that's sort of the beauty of it. You never can predict how it's gonna be. Okay. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, but I'm gonna do the same exact thing on my little pumpkin. So just a little bit of the vintage white and we're sort of supporting our palette knife with our finger and I'm just dragging down from the top. You can even sort of pull down this way it feels more comfortable for you. And then I'm going to wipe my palette knife off. Give you guys a minute to catch up with your highlights, vintage white. So the next thing we're gonna do, again, still have our palette knife, we just cleaned it off. We're gonna pick up some navy blue. And we're gonna do quite, a, you can see on this, we're gonna do quite a bit of navy blue. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the shiplap. So we're gonna start with this sort of paneling we've got in the background, just like we did before. And again, you can add as much or as little of this as you want. If you want it to be really dark and dramatic, you can add a lot. If you just want a little here and there, that's fine too. But we're doing the same thing we did with our other colors, with our light brown and our light blue. And again, this is a much darker color, of course. So keep that in mind when you're 
adding paint to your palette knife that it's gonna a little is gonna go a long way. It's gonna make quite a statement. So if you don't want to be super dark, then just keep that in mind. Ooh, that was a lot. That's okay, though. And then you could go, you're swiping down, but you could go side to side also, right, with the palette knife, Jesse? Um, for this one, it's really better, especially for the shiplap part, it's really better to go uh, sort of pull down. You can go side to side, but if you go back and forth over the same thing, it tends to get muddy. You start to kind of just start shifting the same paint around, and you don't get that beautiful sort of organic stroke. So, I mean, sometimes with a palette knife, like if you're doing a palette knife painting, it's great. You can sort of just mix paints on your canvas. But for this, since we're just trying to get that texture, I kind of would recommend just doing the pull down thing. Right. That's a good tip and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I probably should have said that. You're right. It's better to just do the pull down for this part. Because like I said, otherwise, you can see on here, if you start going left and right and left and right, you just start to sort of smear it around and you're not getting that pretty texture come through. And that's not really what we're looking for. Okay. And again, add as much or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. I keep going back. So I'm also going to add some of this navy blue um, to the bottom, just a little bit. I'm not going to add a ton, not as much as I did the other colors. And I'm going left and right on the bottom. You can see this is a little bit different because I want it to look different from the ship lap. And ship lap. But again, I don't want to go left and right and back and forth. I'm just kind of going in one direction because again that'll just start smearing paint and mixing it. I don't think you're going to like the effect. And then once you're done with that we're going to hang on to the navy blue um, and we're going to start doing the same thing. Remember when we did the highlights and we pulled down? We do the same thing on these pumpkins but we're going to do shadows. So we're going to start from the bottom and pull up the same thing. So remember we took the white and we pulled down now we're going to use the navy blue and we're going to hold it the same way and we're going to pull up to create something like a shadow effect. And you can even, if you want, if it's more comfortable, turn your painting upside down and pull down because it might be just, it might feel more comfortable in your hand to pull down with the palette knife as opposed to trying to um, you know, push up with it. It doesn't feel as natural, not to me anyway. So you can flip your painting upside down and then you don't have to worry about that. That's a great idea. I know you turn your, you know, your canvas a lot when you're painting and that, I think that'll really help people, especially using the palette knife. Good, good. I'm glad. Yeah, I do. I try not to move my canvas too much while I'm teaching because <laughs> I feel like it confuses people. But when I'm painting myself, if I'm just painting at my desk, my canvas, man, you better believe it's in all kinds of weird directions depending on how I'm painting. So never be afraid to move your canvas to make it more comfortable for yourself. And then don't forget we're going to do it on our smaller pumpkin too. All right, so I'm gonna turn it back up right. So you can see now we've got that really beautiful dark shadow and our pumpkins are kind of starting to look more dimensional. So now we're gonna, we still have our navy blue and we're still using our palette knife. We haven't switched colors. We're gonna add a little bit of shadow to our stems. So you can see here, it's sort of dark on the underside of these stems, like as they're turning, the underside is dark. So we're gonna use the very tip of our palette knife. You can see I have my finger on the tip to sort of make it, to sort of make it steady in my hand. 
So take a look at that, guys. I'm sort of holding my palette knife like this. I just got the tip. If you're using a credit card or a debit card, just use the very corner of it. And we're going to just focus right on the underside edge of this stem. We're just going to smear some blue in there because you want it to look like there's a shadow on the underside of the stem, the way how it's turned, the underneath side would have a shadow. Oh, got a big one at the end, but that's okay. Just a little bit, you don't want to overdo it. Just a couple little strokes under there to just give it a little bit more dimension. So now, once you've done that, so again, don't take too much time on it. That should be a super quick one, just adding your little strokes. We're gonna take our palette knife, still with navy blue, and we're gonna drag it along the edge of our canvas. We're just, you can see how I sort of have it here. I'll show you, hopefully you can see it better. I just sort of got it at an angle on my canvas and I'm just dragging it on the edge. And we're just creating it, we're making it look like even our canvas, even the painting of the pumpkins, is sort of chipped and worn. You're gonna, we wanna pay attention to the corners and just drag it across the edges. Just to give it again, some more texture. Make it look really rustic. And you can even go on the sides of your canvas. If you've painted the sides or even if you haven't, you can drag it on the side too to give the sides some texture, just like that. And you can see how it kind of looks like chipped paint. Can you see that? It looks like it was painted blue and then it's just worn off over time. I wiped off the bottom because I don't want to get my table dirty. I don't want to get in trouble for getting paint all over this pretty table. <laughs> Will not be the first time or the last. <laughs> That's true. All right. And then once you're done with that, that is it for the navy blue. It looks great. Thanks. We've only got one more step. So I want to give you guys just a minute to catch up to make sure you're with me. And then we're going to move on to our last step, which is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to make some room on my palette real quick while you guys are catching up. And if you have any news, oh, oh no, I was going to tell them about Treasure Gold just while everybody was catching up. Yeah, please do, please do. Yeah. So Treasure Gold is the most metallic paint out there. And the great thing about this is that it's non-toxic because a lot of time, a lot of the liquid leaf and the any kind of gold like this has a really bad odor to it. And this is yeah. non-toxic and there's no odor. So this is an amazing. It's Folk Art Treasure Gold. It comes in a ton of different colors. We've got all the basics, the gold, silver, copper, antique um, copper. Um, there's a beautiful rose gold, but there actually are also jewel tones now at Michael's available also. So tons of beautiful colors, especially for fall. Um, this is definitely a paint you want to have to add. Yes, Kira is right. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite paints to use. I end up adding it to so many of my paintings. <laughs> At the end, I'm like, it just needs a little bit of treasure gold. That'll finish it. <laughs> I just love this paint so much. And like Kira said, she's absolutely right. Like a lot of these like really beautiful, um, like super, super metallic paints are usually like alcohol based or solvent based. And so they're smelly and they're expensive and you don't really want to use them in your house. You don't have good ventilation. So this is the best water-based um, metallic paint out there. So Folk Art Treasure Gold, make sure you pick some up and play with it because it is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it is so shiny. Like we've done projects here. We've done vases, lamps, and um, it works on so many different surfaces, which is great. Wood, canvas, terracotta. Mm -hmm. um, you can almost see a reflection in it. It is that that it's shimmery, not that gold. Like, it's like almost mirror. It's like mirror. Yeah. Like, you can put your hand up to it and you're like, I can see my hand yeah. in that vase. Like it is so, so, so shiny. It's awesome. 
Oh, I can't wait to use it. <laughs> All right, and guys. Jessie so will be you... painting, and she'll be like, some treasure gold. I'm like, sure, put it on there. <laughs> I'm like, gosh, this painting needs something. Ah, treasure gold. <laughs> Every time. Okay, so that said, we're going to use it. Um, so I'm going to pour some out onto my can, onto, not, my, not my canvas, onto my palette. You can see how shiny that already is. It looks like liquid gold. And so we're going to be using this a very similar way that we've been doing the rest of our color. So I'm going to dip my palette knife in it. You can see how shiny it is even on the palette knife. And we are going to add this like highlights across our whole painting. So you can see here in our finished one, we're going to add it to the shiplap and we're going to add it to the top of the pumpkins and we're going to drag it around the edges just like we did with the navy. So here I'll show you. We're going to start adding it to the shiplap. And just like any of our other colors, you can feel free to use as much or as little of this as you would like. It's your painting, so it's totally up to you. Because you, it is so bright on camera. Oh, yay. Can you see you it can, shining? Yeah, you can really see it, how metallic it is. Yep. It's so good. So again, we're just adding it to our sort of paneling behind our pumpkins. And I'm gonna add some to the bottom as well. And again, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna drag it around the edges just like we did with the navy just because I love it so much. You don't have to add as much if you don't um, want as much gold on yours, but uh, I just think it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna put on as much as I can. I'm gonna drag it around the edges and it just, it's so sparkly. Like even when it, even just the little parts where it's like very subtle and there's barely any paint, when it catches the light, it just shines. And again, you can do this on the sides too if you wanted to. I'm getting a little, my navy's a little wet still, so I'm gonna wipe it off. And then last but not least, I'm going to um, use it the same way that I did our white highlights on the top of the pumpkin. I'm gonna do that with the gold too. Just for another beautiful highlight. I'm just going to drag down. You can kind of go crazy with it or you can keep it sort of subtle. It's totally up to you. And I'm going to put a little on my stems too at the top, like they're shining. Ooh, that was a lot. A lot of people are asking about the treasure gold. So again, you can get this at Michael's in store, michaels.com, and there's a ton of different colors. So you definitely want to check that out. You can see now really it's, still it's beautiful. And it's already so shiny. It's not even dry yet. Yeah. You can see it on this one too. This one is dry, so you can see how it's just shining. There's not as much on this one even. Uh, you can just see where it is, where it catches the light. It just pops. And that is it for our farmhouse pumpkins, guys. So make sure you go ahead and you sign your painting. As always, you can use your small round brush. You can go ahead and grab the number five and you can sign your name. And that is it, like I said, for our farmhouse pumpkins. Yeah, it looks awesome. Thanks. So good. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Again, we'll be back next Monday. Jesse will be painting the fall trees. Awesome. Um, don't forget to go to michaels.com, their community classroom page, and you can watch this video and all their other videos after the live so you can paint along. And also check out our Facebook group. So it's Let's, Let's Paint with Plaid. Definitely go on there, post your painting. And like I said, Jesse's on there, Andy's on there. We've got, you know, just a ton of inspiration for you. So everybody have a great week.
And we'll see you, um, I guess, on Friday. You'll be with Evil Ted. So if anybody's yes. in the cosplay class, if not, we'll see you next Monday. Bye, guys. Okay, Thank bye. you for joining us.